All right, team, so today we're gonna to set up email templates for my 4x4 so that we can send weekly digests of all the likes and views the builds had. So let's jump into it. All right, so to get started, we're gonna use the React email package, which is really cool. What it allows us to do is write React components that then gets spat out into HTML, which is a really nice way of doing this. So the package is, or the, email, or the website is react.email. So we're gonna go through the manual setup because we already have a project. So the first thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna skip this create directory because um, we already have that. Um, so we're gonna now install. Let's grab all of these guys and we're gonna run and install that. So let's just jump it in here. Cool, that's installed. Let us start up our server. All right, so the next step here is to add the scripts. So we're gonna go jump into package JSON. And we're gonna add in email. So we wanna run the email. So we're not gonna run dev because we already have a dev server. We're gonna run the email server. So we're gonna just chuck that in here and that's gonna reference email dev, I believe. Yes, save that out. All right. Now what we can do, let's just jump in here and see if we can run this. So npm run email. What are you saying? Missing emails folder. Okay, cool. Probably should have followed the next step here. We'll, we'll just create it in the root here for now. Emails. And we're going to create, copy this index just to start. Let's run, try run this again. Cool. Looks like that's compiled. Let's run that. Localhost 3000, see what we have. Next font, Google. Let's see if we can bump up our next version to get this working. Make sure that when you're using this package, one thing to note is that we are using the latest version of Next. We were on 13.1, I just upgraded to 13.4 and seems to be working again or working. So now what we can do is here's the React email preview. So you can see here's our all emails and here's our index file. And it's got a button. Very cool little piece of software here. So we can, I'll bump this up. So we can see here, you can see what it looks like on a desktop. And you can see what it looks like in source. It's a little send button here. Okay, so. Now that we've got the basic piece set up, let's see how this works. So what we wanna do is set up a email that we can send every week that basically lets the user know, hey, this is how many views your build has had in this time, and then um, this is how many likes it's had. And we only wanna send that if it has had views or likes. We don't wanna spam people. We also wanna allow them to opt out. So we can add that functionality later. So what we're gonna do, the first piece is we're gonna Probably set up um, each mailer as its own. Let's see if it supports folders. So we're gonna say weekly digest. Let me create a component inside there and we're gonna just grab this and copy it. And what we're gonna just do right here is just write weekly digest. Let us see if what happens. Okay, so it doesn't look like it picks up that. So it looks like it wants to have each component directly in the tree without having it in a folder. It's a bit lame, but that's okay. All right, so now what we got to see is what else can we do here? So what does our email look like? So let's see what they have. Is have a look at all the different, we've got examples here. This is cool. And this is very cool because we can actually see what it looks like and then also see the source. So this is from React Email Components. Let's see if we have that. Do we have React Email Components? We just got the buttons. It looks like we're importing them individually. So that's very important to note. So they've got all sorts of things, Airbnb, Apple Receipt. So there's very powerful little library so we'll probably run with something like in a column like this. 
which is quite cool. But we are just waiting on the design for that one. So let's look at what the Vercel one looks like. So they're using, they're using Tailwind styling all throughout. I wonder if they're doing this with everything. I want to install all the components for this guy. What I have noticed, it never shuts down these processes properly. That's kind of annoying. So let's go. I want to grab that. I want to run that instead of individual. I think that's easier just to import like this. Especially because I don't think it matters too much for performance reasons with the file size because it's going to pull them in and then it's going to render it out to HTML anyway. So we're going to just rip out button and HTML. I don't think we need that anymore. I'm just going to run npm install again just to clean that up. So we've got our weekly digest here. So okay, so the first thing I want to know is how do we set the background of the entire page? So that's the body, body container. So we've got HTML and then we're going to import. So what we're going to do here is get rid of this guy. Now we're going to start importing our components. So we're going to have the body component. So it's going to go HTML, then we're going to have body. And what are you complaining about here for me? Oh, this is going to be components. It's to be in the project dependencies, which it is. Just double check this. It's definitely there. What are you asking for? Cool. So we're going to just turn this into the same style. We've got everything else in here. So it's const email. Con sorry, const email. It's equal to. Then we're going to export the default down here. And this, so we're going to call, well, actually, instead of calling it email, we'll call it weekly digest. Right. And I'm just going to have this just so it doesn't collapse our stuff for us. I don't think you can inject props, but you possibly can with server rendering. So we'll just do that. Um, let's have a look at what that looks like. Weekly digest. Nothing yet. So interesting that that doesn't show up, but we'll probably have to wrap it in something. Cool. So let's do the body. And now what, yeah, we want the, we want the style here. We're going to do background color. We're going to just set it to white to match the rest of our app. There we go. Ah, that's why it didn't show because the text was black. Great. So we've got our white there. And now what I want to do is similar to this. We want to have a container sitting in the middle there. So we're going to use the container component. Now, hopefully that centers everything and what we can do, do we have to tell it the width? Yeah. So can we set width? No. Style width. And we're going to set that. We'll just copy the Vercel one. So 465. Actually, I usually run it at 600. Um, so we're just going to go content here. Container we need to import. Let's import that. And let's see what we got. There we go. Content. All right. So let's go. Border is going to be one pixel solid. And we just do EF, EF, EF for now. There we go. We've got a border. So let what I want to do, actually want to try. Let's just do something crazy and just go tailwind. Let's, let's try this. This be crazy. So we'll go here, we go tailwind. Let's move this body into there. And let's see if we can use tailwind. So let's see if we can actually do this. We don't have tailwind installed in our project, so I'm not sure this will work. Let's see what happens. It's still keeping it. So let's go. What if, let's just copy these props. Let's see. Oh, wait, there we go. We got Tailwind installed as part of the package. That's pretty cool. So we'll keep going with that. So 
content. Then we're going to probably have our, I'm imagining we're going to have our logo in the top there. So what are these sections? Let's see what that looks like. It's just a section that just must be it's probably building. Let's, what does it build? Yeah, it builds a table. So we can see here that it actually spits out. So we got our react, the HTML and the plain text. So we can see there, this is turning into, so the react is rendering out into table. So if we now think about it in that way, we can go, okay, so we're going to have a section and this next section is going to be, this is going to be our header. So in here, we're going to have the logo and make sure we import that. And let's see what we have logo. So MT must be margin top. So I'm not familiar with Tailwind, but that's what it looks like it is. Then we're going to have our image. So now what we need is our actual uh, logo file. So where are we getting that from? So that looks like they're getting it from static. Base URL. Base URL is this one. So let's define that. And then what we're doing is we're going static slash Vercel logo. So let's look at my four by four. So if we inspect this piece here. Okay, so that's unfortunately that is not a static file. That's an SVG. So it is changing. So we probably need to create a PNG or something that we can use there. So for now, I'll just leave it as logo. So what do we want this thing to look like? So in the meantime, I might just have a quick chat with the designer and see what we're going to look like. Okay, so what we're going to try to do is something like this here. So we've got a few little changes we'll make to it on the fly, but I think overall that's what we're going to go for. So we're going to have a section with the logo, then a section after it with the text. So let's just check if this has a component for text. Yes. Um, so we can import that after here. So we're going to grab text. Um, so I'm just going to lay this out pretty quick. So we're going to go text here. And then what we're going to say is we're going to say the date. So I'm just going to grab that for now. And we're going to say the weekly update. So we'll probably send this on possibly Friday or Monday. So we'll just, but that date will be dynamic. So this text will be large and that's fine. So that'll be the section there. Then the next section will have our likes in here. So this would be like, you've had plus three new likes and you're going to have uh, plus 123 new views in the last week. Okay, um, so that's cool. So then I like this next piece. What we're going to say is your build has been on the site for 128 days. And in that time you've received that. That's really cool. A, a, I'm going to say a total of that. Great. Uh, since last week, there's been five new. So that's kind of cool too. So we're going to say in the, since in the last week, we've added five new builds that are matching your car. So, or your vehicle. So it's going to be five new builds matching your make and model. Since in the, we'll probably write in the last week. There have been five new builds matching your make more uploaded. And then we're going to add a link to see them. All right. So let's see what that's looking like so far. Cool. Pretty, pretty standard. Um, all right. So we'll add that. Then we're going to have a footer. So how does this work? So container. I wonder if we can have multi container. Uh, let's see if they have a footer component. 
footer. I guess it doesn't really matter. So we can just say footer and then this, let's just call this. We're going to just add some text in here. We definitely need a way to unsubscribe in here as well. So we're going to say footer. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay, so that's sitting outside there. Okay, we need to give it the same class name. Cool. So what we don't want to do here is actually have a border. So we get rid of that. We don't want margin Y, margin X auto padding. We don't want padding. That's cool. Margin Y, we're going to say 20. Let's remove this one. So this must be on the bottom. Yeah, okay, so it's margin here. So maybe if we just change it to margin top. There we go. So the other container was pushing that one down. I might just pull this out so you guys can see that better. There, and then we'll just shrink this guy. So that's what we got so far. So it looks pretty cool, pretty standard. That's our info. And it looks like it automatically gives text a little bit of a margin here. So we might want to reduce this here. So if we can say class name, empty, So I wonder what's, what's giving it that. So it's giving a paragraph every time. So we've set, okay, so it's margin bottom as well on this guy. So we need to set it. If we go here, MB zero pixels. There we go. Now we've got those two sitting next to each other. That's great. So with this one, we want to actually have a heading. Let's just check, is there a heading app? There is a heading component. That's good. So we'll use that. So that'll be this guy. All right. There we go. Weekly update. Cool. Sweeter. So now we need the logo. So I'll just quickly grab that. All right. So I just dropped the logos in the public folder. Let's see if we can consume them. So I'm just going to look at how they've done it here again. So they are looking at logo. This is the wrong one. We look in the source for the Vercel one. Um, so logo or the image is here. So that's the static Vercel. So we're going to chuck that in there. Let's import the image component. Base URL static. And then what this will be will just be logo.png. All right, let's see what that does. It looks like it's disappeared. Okay, so to get images working, we just need to make sure that we set the base URL to the same URL of our development server. So we're running this on 3000, so 3000 doesn't have it, so we need to do it on 3001. Now what you can see is if you look at the source for the HTML, if we look at the email, we'll see that it's directing to source HTTP localhost 3001 logo two times. So there we go. So we're running. Um, now what we want to do is we want to shrink this because this is actually way too big. So we're going to go 90 by 40. That looks pretty good. So if we now go back to here, I think we're running roughly the same kind of size. So if we just just going to double check 82 by 31. So we're a little bit bigger in the email, but that's okay. That looks pretty cool. Cool. All right. So let's drop, I reckon we drop this margin top in half just to give it a little bit there. Cool. So now what we're going to say is this weekly update. So we're going to go class. Now I am not familiar with Tailwind, so I'm going to jump in to a cheat sheet. Hopefully we have some sort of help here. 
Let's see. Color. Where is the typography? Text color. So we want to do a light gray, text gray 400. Great. So we're going to add to here text gray 400. What are we looking like? Pretty good. That's pretty good. It's 12th of May 2023 weekly update. Love it. Now, what do we go into? We go into little boxes. So what components do we have for that in here? So it's not a button, it's not a section. Um, I wonder if we can give text border. Yeah, let's just try and see. Can we give this guy, so if we go class name, can we go border, border solid, and then we're gonna just set the border color here. Let's see if that works. It does work. Okay, so that's that's all right. So we can let's roll with that. There. Let's do exactly the same here. We also want the radius, the rounded. So I'm going to run like that. Border rounded. Yep. So we want a little bit of padding in there as well. So we're going to do. What is padding? Padding is just. Let's go for a wild guess and just say it's P and I'm going to go eight pixels. Let's see if that works. Yep. That's the one. Sweet. So now it looks like we're getting a little margin bottom here. So I want to go MB zero. Now I'm, I'm sure don't have to write that every time. Let's see what's going on in here. This is a P again. So this is margin bottom zero, but then we've got margin top on this guy as well. I want to just see if we can do just straight up zero like this. Learning tailwind as we go. So margin bottom that works as well. So I'm going to just do the same thing here, but I'm going to go MT zero margin top zero. That's cool. So now we can say MT. Can you just do this? Yep. Yeah, four. I actually prefer working in just the units like this without being explicit. So that's that there. So if we change this to padding eight. Yes, yeah, so that must be using what is that? We're using REM. Yeah, it's using RAM. So what we'll do instead, we'll use these units, which is easier than being explicit with pixels and play with them like this. So we're going to go to, uh, there we go. So padding two. Okay, margin top. What we're going to do here is probably go eight. Let's see what that looks like. Eight. Maybe we're using that to convert those to zeros. Let's turn this to four, four. I'm just playing with the styling now just to see what we can get where there. Might even go zero to be honest. That looks pretty cool. My before by four weekly update. What can, I wonder what you can do with rounded. Let's see what we can do with rounded here. Where are ya? Border radius, round, okay, cool. So we can chuck that in there. So we can go rounded, large. I'm just giving this up here, a little rounded corners, a bit bigger. Excel, that kind of matches what we have here. More. This is looking pretty cool. All right, so we need to have an icon. So we're probably going to need to use images here because icons are SVGs and not supported so well in email clients. So that's okay. Um, we'll just ask our designer to please export a little heart icon and an eye icon for us. And then we can come back to that later. <laughs> that's just magic. It's the magic of the internet. You just say things and things happen. Um, all right. 
So now we've got the likes, the new views, and then we've got this piece here. So we've got your build has been on the site for 128 days. In that time, you received a total of 1,250 views. For easy use, I'm just gonna do that. And 223 likes, epic. In the last week, there have been five new builds matching your make and model uploaded. And then what we wanna see is, um, we wanna sh probably show a button, I think. For now, we'll just say view builds, right? So we'll just do a button. So let's just add that. And we're gonna add it in the section. So let's see if that works. What does the button look like? Okay, pretty pretty average. What are they what have they done here? So for button, they are using where are you? There you are. A class name. For now, we're just going to go href is just this. And class name is going to be here. So what background color will we go on our button? Probably just use, because we're just doing a pretty strip black and white email, we could probably just go a black button. So we're going to go, where are you? BG, rounded, text white, text, great. Chuck that in. What do we look like? Tiny. We want at least a 16 pixel there. We want padding for sure of four. We could do, can you do PY? Yep. And then PX is eight. Awesome. So that's pretty cool. Might even chuck a margin top on that of four. Yep. Sweet. So that's pretty much the layout here, the, the basic weekly update. So what we do need to do though is, is show the car, the project itself. So it's, it's, the pro, it's the weekly update for something. So how do we lay this out? So we can probably just add above here, we can add a new text block. We can say your project or we can just, we can probably just say like, so if we have a look at examples, what do we have? So the car is this one. So let's go back to it. So we're going to say the 2023. Yeah, just so we can like reference the car. And we might even put a heading but what we're going to do here is we're going to go class name and we're going to say font size. That's text, sorry, text. And we're going to make that 16 pixels. There we go. Weekly update 2023 Ford Ranger next gen. Three new likes. 12 new views. So that's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Now, whether or not we want to try and do this or even show the profile picture, let's just see what these guys are doing. So they've got little pictures there. So we can get the pictures of the build, of the actual build. So I'm wondering if we try and do that. In here, do we do a circle? How do we make this look good? So we've got a little circle there for this guy. So possibly what we can do here is we grab another image. I'm gonna hard code the URL for now because I wanna just grab this one. So let's grab that for now. So that's hard coded. 
and let's see what that looks like not great so what we want to do here is we're going to be clever and we're going to say we're going to go 200 high width 200 so we're using image kit to host all our images image optimization cdn so we can just pass these params in and it'll automatically resize this image for us so that's what we're going to do now if we just set these parameters properly so it's 200 by 200 right so that's probably pretty aggressive so we're going to go 100 by 100 let's see what that looks like that's pretty good now what we're going to do here is we're going to say rounded let's see if that works yes awesome so we're going to say rounded um always do you say radius just rounded excel so let's go they probably even have a full rounded full yep so we're going to go full full and that's going to turn into a circle boom there we go now we don't want this to be margin x auto so we're going to remove that there we go weekly update let's put a little bit of a margin y we actually want margin top and we want that to do four there we go not a hundred percent sure on that but i will get feedback from the designer we could probably you know what's probably throwing it is that this needs to live above probably in its own section I reckon if we move this to a section yeah that still doesn't look a hundred percent so I'll get some feedback on that one weekly update 2023 but that's looking pretty cool so in not a very long time we've been able to smash together an email and that it also compiles down to HTML which is pretty amazing usually this is a very tedious job so thank you very much react email team you guys have done an amazing job so let's see what we have in the footer um so i think for now what we're going to just do is add this text to unsubscribe right so we want to allow users to easily unsubscribe so we're going to drop this font size down so it's gonna be text I think like 12 pixels should be fine yep now let's just clean this up a little bit so this needs to be a link so this will be the email address and if you don't want to receive these emails anymore that's fine. So let's let's see what they have here for line line height. So we want leading none. Okay. Probably not going to be the best. What do you have? That's too little. So we want 1.3. Let's go with oh snug. Leading snug. That's cool. There we go. This message was sent to, if you don't want to receive these emails from my before in the future, you can edit your profile or unsubscribe. Now we need a link. So what do they use here? Do they, what does this look like? So we're looking for that little link there. Link, it's called a link. Oh, who would have thought? H-I-J, here we go, link. And this is going to be link and it's going to be unsubscribe. And the link is going to be basically and what we're going to want to do is pass in the email here and we're also going to want to, the type of email so we're going to say unsubscribe email equals email and type equals weekly digest So we don't need those quotes in there. 
So that what we'll do is when the user clicks that, we'll set up an endpoint, unsubscribe, and that'll take you to my four by four slash unsubscribe, and then the email and the type. So that way we can just quickly remove that user so they don't get spammed if they don't want to. Awesome. So that's it, I think. That's it. So we've set up the thing. We just need to set up these images actually. So let's do that. And then once we've done there, I think that's that's pretty much the email setup. So we can start sending them. So I just want to actually add a little bit of pad margin top here before we continue in this. Where are you? Let's go margin top four. Okay, so we, let's quickly add these little icons. So we're gonna add the image. We don't need this guy. We're gonna add the image. So in front of this, we're gonna go image. And we are going to set the width and height. It looks like 16. By 19 which is odd 18 by 19 16 by 19 let's call it 20 and 20 um, so we're gonna set it here so we're gonna go height is equal to 20 width equals 20 alt equals heart um, then we're gonna go source now that is going to be the same way as we did this guy. So we're going to grab the source from here. And this is going to be heart.png. So let's see what that looks like. There we go. I need to fix that up so it's in line. So chuck that there and then chuck this one. And this one's going to be I. For views so that looks a bit weird so let's just copy what that size is meant to be so it's meant to be 18 by 19 so it's 18 19 and this guy's meant to be 16 by 19 let's see what that looks like that guy still doesn't look quite right does he Let's see, what is he? That is really odd. So let's just go and play with in here. Can we change this? So if we, so what it looks like is too high. Let's try 16. Still looks weird, 14. And also his eyes getting cut off. You know what we can do, and stop mucking around, is if we just open up this folder in, in Finder. Let's see what the actual, so the I info is 37 by 28. So if we go 28 divided by two, 14. Fourteen by eighteen. That should give us a pretty good ratio. And then the heart. Let's, let's see what he is. It's thirty-two by twenty-eight, so that's going to be sixteen by fourteen. Cool. Now what we need to do is we need to inline this. Now, so this is a P tag. Can we add flex to here? So we can just write flex. Let's see if that works. If we just go flex, that works there. And obviously we're gonna have better support in our browser than most email clients, but we'll see what we can do. And we want things, so now we wanna do align items. So we wanna go item center. Let me 
You get rid of the justify. Cool. Now we just need to give a bit of padding here or margin to the left. So we're going to go class name. We're going to say margin. Um, margin right. That's it, margin right. Here we go, tailwind for the win. Cool. So that looks pretty good. Ready to go. I think that's the general layout done. So now what we wanna do here is we're gonna accept props here. So we're gonna say weekly, I'm gonna actually also name this weekly digest email or mailer. And then we're going to call this props. And then what we're going to do is we're going to accept all the props that we're going to, we're going to need for this. So what do we need? So we need the date. So um, generation date. And that's going to be a string. We're going to need the um, project. Now I think, can we, can we pass in a, just a project? So let's see if we can, I wonder if this will support, if we can import type project from Prisma client. I wonder if this will work. So we're going to pass in that. Right. So that's cool. What I want to see is how are they doing this? Oh, okay, they're defaulting it here so that when you're doing the preview, you can see here. So when they're doing the preview, they're defaulting all these props. So that's fine. So we can do all that. So we'll say generation date. And then what we'll do is um, is equal to 12th of May, 2023. If it's not supplied. And then we can, so we can just move on through here. So we can say project. Um, that's an object, so it's going to be a little bit harder. What I can do is I can say um, it's going to be equal to default project. And we're going to define that up here. So it'll have a title. So we're going to call it this one. Right. Because now what we can do here is we can just say this it's project dot title let's see if that works so it's still sitting so now we can control this so if we say 2022 yep great so what we're going to do is we're going to create default or dummy dummy data and then if it's not supplied so in the preview mode we don't have those props we're going to use those um, that data Otherwise, we're going to actually go and um, get it passed in when we call the render function later on. So project will also have um, project images. So let's just go and see how this looks normally. If we go into projects, um, slug, and go to the index. It's actually the components project main image is what we're looking for. So the main image is here. So it's project, project images, and then it's an array and it has the image. And an image URL. It, it might even be easiest to just send to um, project image. We're gonna just define it like that. Just so that it's easier to use rather than trying to render the user component or a hook to find out what that is. Sweet. So we're going to call that. That's going to be a string. So we're going to say new like count. That's a number. We can also have new view count number. So that'll be here. We'll go new like count. Let's say four. New view count is going to be 46, you had a good week. So we're going to use these. So 
So you had in here, new like count, and you had a new view count. Great. So then we can say like total view count equals one, um, total like count 23. I'm just going to inject all these things in here. Total view count, total like count. And then we're going to say new similar new builds, or we call it projects, so we call it projects, equals four. Where are we here? Call that similar new projects count. So let's add these. Total view count, total like count, similar new projects count. Sweet generation date, shove that there. There we go, it's all dynamic. Um, build date, so we're gonna say uh, days on, days since creation. We're gonna call that one, two, four. This is a number, not an actual number. There we go. Days since creation. And that goes here. Great. Now we're going to need the user. User email string. This will be name at email.com Sweet, so we're going to use that here. We're also going to use that here. So we're going to create this. Sweet, so that name and email, and then when you unsubscribe, it should, oh, that's not right. No, that's, why is that not working? Name it, there we go, email, name and email, weekly digest, that's great. Cool, that is all dynamic now. So that's looking pretty good, cool. So now what, we, what have we achieved? So we've actually set up, using React email, we've set up our template for sending emails. So we're gonna, we're gonna use this template probably in the next video and we're going to use the render method from what I can see here. So if we just look down here, we're looking at the utility called render and we're gonna take that and we're gonna pass in the template that we wanna render and we're gonna log it and that's gonna create it to HTML. So what we can do with that is once we have our HTML, we can then pass that to SendGrid and we're going to send that HTML as the body of the email and away we go. So thank you for watching and on to the next one.